Okay, Larry, it's time for the theme song. Uh, y yeah, Bob. What do I do? Hmm, let's see. I know. You play the guitar. Bob, I don't have any hands. Oh, you're right. Well, okay. Well, you play this. I don't want to play that. Oh, look silly. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. Nope. Not gonna do it. It's for the kids. Oh, okay. But they better not laugh. All right. Better get on out there. If you like to talk to tomatoes, if a squash can make you smile, if you like to waltz with potatoes up and down the produce aisle. Have we got a show for you? And welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. Yep. I bet you're wondering why Larry has a shoe on his head. Yeah, Bob. Why do I have a shoe on my head? Well, I got a letter today from Latasha Robbins of Savannah, Georgia. Latasha wants to know what loving your neighbor really means. And that's why I have a shoe on my head? Yes. No. Well, kind of. Help me out here, Bob. You see, I'm about to tell Latasha the story of Flibber Olu, and in that story, you, Larry, have a shoe on your head. Oh, it's all so clear now. Hurry up and tell the story. My head's starting to sweat. Okay, here goes. The sun always shone on the mountains of Fibble. The wind and the rains never came. To call the place beautiful, no one would quibble, though hard on the feet, they'd exclaim. But high in those hills, past the rocks and the rubble, so high that the clouds were below, sat two tiny towns that were nothing but trouble. As you listen, you'll see that it's so. Now the town to the west that thought it was best bore the name Flibberoloo, where the women and men since 1710 have worn on their heads one large shoe. Now in town number two, one big shoe wouldn't do. So the people of Jibberty Lot would look down and bellow at shoe-headed fellows and place on their own heads a pot. Mine's really more of a kettle. For days without end, these two neighbors would bicker as to whose headgear was best, and the shoes and the pots would fly ever thicker from morning to night without rest. But not all of the people who lived in these cities were angry and bitter and vile. A few would write poems and sing happy ditties and greet all their friends with a smile. One Flibian fellow who hated to fight tried hard not to act like a mobster. While pots crashed around him from morning till night, he'd just play with his pet wind-up lobster. They kept to themselves and they'd talk and they'd talk until one day he said, Hey, let's go for a walk. I'm tired of lying around like a squid. I want to go out there. So that's what he did. The shoe-headed boy and his blue plastic friend walked out of their town and began to descend to the dark rocky valley between the two cities, away from his friends and their light-hearted ditties. Ba-la-la. Ba-la-la. Hey, 
Hey, this is swell, he said. Gosh, this is fun. It's great that my lobster can get out and run. But neither the toy nor the boy with the shoe could see the disaster about to ensue. For up in the rocks, hidden just out of sight, were six beady eyes filled with anger and spite. Six beady eyes watched our hero meander, two shifty crooks and their ruthless commander. Oh, look what good fortune, the nasty one said. Here comes a poor fool with a shoe on his head. I bet he's got money. I bet he's got gold or maybe some jewelry he'd like us to hold. Whatever the booty, I think I could stand it. Why, that's what I live for. That's why I'm a bandit. And then they attacked him from under their rock. First they knocked off his shoe, then they knocked off his sock. But the thing they did next was extremely unfunny. Why, they shook him so hard that he dropped his milk money. Hey! He protested. I don't like your ilk. How will I go strong if I don't drink my milk? But they didn't care. They'd accomplished their goal. So they put our friend down, stuck his head in a hole, and walked off with his money, every last nickel. Then yelled back as they left. See you around, silly pickle. Um, I'm a cucumber. Then he said with a moan, Well, I guess I'm alone. But this was a loneliness he'd never known. His friends were far off and his lobster was missing. The sound he could hear was just the wind hissing. Hello? Hello? Things looked pretty grim for our Flibian buddy. His head in a hole, his shoe bent and muddy. But then... Were those footsteps? Oh, could it be true? Along came the mayor of Flibberoo. Of anyone, surely he'd help the poor soul. Hello, said the boy with his head in a hole. I seem to have fallen. I seem to be stuck. But now that you're here, well, I guess I'm in luck. Oh, dear, said the mayor, observing the shoe. A fellow in need, and he's Flibian, too. <laughs> Young man, I have noticed your dire situation, and please rest assured that I share your frustration. But, uh, how can I put this? Oh, what can I say? Ah, oh, maybe you understand better this way. Is that music? I'm busy, busy, dreadfully busy. You've no idea what I have to do. Busy, busy, shockingly busy. Much, much too busy for you. I see. As soon as the mayor had finished his song, a Flibian doctor came strolling along. Out of my way! She said, starting to slide. If you and your pickle would please step aside, I'm very important I can't stand and chat. Well, that's not my pickle. I found him like that. Besides, it so happens I'm noteworthy too. Why, I am the mayor of Flibberoo. Um, um, I'm a cucumber. I see, said the doctor. Then you'll understand without an appointment I can't lend a hand. The folks with bronchitis, they're kids with a flu, she said to the mayor of Flibberoo. If I'm not mistaken, you're quite busy too. Well, they talked about schedules, compared daily planners, till finally a voice said, Please pardon my manners. I don't mean to bug you. I see that you're busy, but being inverted has made me quite dizzy. The two other Flibians paused for a while. They looked at each other, then said with a smile, We're busy, busy, dreadfully busy. You've no idea what we have to do. Busy, busy, shockingly busy. Much, much too busy for you. Cause we're busy, busy, dreadfully busy. you set out to grow something superior, you grow towards your truth. Like a plant grows towards light, you grow against the grain. It's the way we've been growing since 1982. We carefully craft every bottle, and we set the standard for sustainability. So no matter how you grow, grow better, grow smarter, grow kinder, and above all else, grow true. Kendall Jackson. When you set out to grow something superior, you grow towards your truth. It's the way we've been growing since 1982. Grow better, grow smarter, grow kinder, and above all else, grow true.
just dreadful. How could they desert their Flibian friend with his head in the dirt? That's it then. I'm finished. I'll die here down under. If they would not help me, then who would? He wondered. But wait, someone else on the road overhead. Would they help a friend beaten up, left for dead? Oh, look, on his head, not a shoe but a pot. Why, this little guy was from Jibberty Lot. Would he help a Flibian? Certainly not. The boy with the pot saw our friend with the shoe. Oh, look! He exclaimed. He's from Flibberoo. Why, they think we're garbage. They pelt us with shoes. Why should I care if he's beaten and bruised? But out here in the wild, his chances are slim. If I was in need, would I want help from him? He looked at our friend, and he looked at the shoe. And then in his heart, he knew what to do. He may be Flebian, that's plain to see. But God made him special, just like he made me. So we got him unstuck, and he picked up his shoe. And together, they walked back to Flibberoo out of the valley and back into town where he stayed by his side till the doctor was found. Oh my, said the doctor. He's wearing a pot. The little one there is from Jibberty Not. <coughs> you saved this fellow? You pulled him through it? I don't understand. Tell me, why did you do it? He has a shoe and I have a pot. But when we look deeper, some money to pay for the cucumber's bill and the mayor cried out with his eyes moist and runny i'm touched by his act of goodwill if this little guy can take care of his brother when he lives in one town and he in the other well, why can't we all try to help one another and love would surround our fair hill <laughs> now if you visit the mountains of fibble you won't see a shoe or a pot Instead, they throw flowers and candy to nibble. I bet that you'd like it a lot. It's time for Silly Songs with Larry. The part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. Our curtain opens as Larry, having just finished his morning bath, is searching for his hairbrush. Having no success, Larry cries out, Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where, 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 enters the scene. Shocked and slightly embarrassed at the sight of Larry in a towel, Pa regains his composure and reports. I think I saw a hairbrush back there! Back there is my hairbrush. Back there is my hairbrush. Back there, back there, oh, where, back there, oh, where, oh, where, back there, back there, back there! Is my hairbrush... Having heard his joyous proclamation, Julian Asparagus enters the scene. Shocked and slightly embarrassed at the sight of Larry in a towel, Junior regains his composure and comments. Why do you need a hairbrush? You don't have any hair! Larry is taken aback. The thought had never occurred to him. No hair? What will this mean? What will become of him? What will become of 
this hairbrush. Lanny wonders. No hair for my hairbrush. No hair for my hairbrush. No hair, no hair, no hair. Having heard his wondering, Bob Slato enters the scene. Shocked and slightly embarrassed at the sight of Larry in the towel, Bob regains his composure and confesses. Larry, that old hairbrush of yours. Well, you never use it. You don't really need it, so... Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know. But I gave it to the peach, because he's got hair. Feeling a deep sense of loss, Larry stumbles back in the bed. Not fair. Oh, my hairbrush. Having heard his lament, the peach enters the scene. Himself in the towel, both Larry and the peach are shocked and slightly embarrassed at the sight of each other. But recognizing Larry's generosity, the peach is thankful. Thanks for that hairbrush. Yes, good has been done here. The peach exits the scene. Larry smiles, but still feeling an emotional attachment for the hairbrush, calls out, Take care of my hairbrush. Take care of my hairbrush. So, is there anyone else you'd like to invite to your birthday party? Um, let's see. Don't forget Louie. Oh, and Marsha. I think that's it. When you set out to grow something superior, you grow towards your truth. Like a plant grows towards light, you grow against the grain. It's the way we've been growing since 1982. We carefully craft every bottle and we set the standard for sustainability. So no matter how you grow, grow better, grow smarter, grow kinder, and above all else, grow true. Kendall Jackson. If your child has diabetes, you'll love how easy Dexcom G7 is. It's on and he's off. You can see his glucose numbers right on your phone. So you can always be there for him with Dexcom G7. Are you forgetting anyone else? No, I don't think so. Well, what about Fernando? I bet he'd like to come. No, not Fernando. Why not? Well, he just moved here, so I don't know him very well. And besides, he talks kind of funny. Now, Junior, he doesn't talk funny. He just talks different. His family is from another country. Yeah, I know. It still sounds funny. You know, Junior, God wants us to love everybody, not just the people that are like us. So we need to accept others just the way they are. Besides, we can learn a lot from people who are different than us. Yeah, I suppose. I'll tell you what. You think about it, and in the morning we'll talk some more. Okay? Okay. Good night, Junior. Good night, Dad. Happy Tots Preschool? Why, yes! Yes, I 
USS Apple Pies. When we get on board, you'll be briefed by the ship's engineer, Scooter. Then you can get to work fixing the power. Okay.
Alex, I'm full. Excuse me. Get him in here! You saved the ship. Oh, it was nothing. Nothing? You're telling me saving 364 lives by rapidly consuming 14,000 metric tons of popcorn is nothing? Well, I guess maybe it's a little something. And you think I wouldn't be your friend just because you guys are different? Why, if you weren't different, none of us would be here right now. Hey, guys, look at this. Well, I got a little bit hungry, so I was just snacking on the scent table when, when I saw this. <gasps> it's some kind of electrical plug or something. Plug it in! <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? You guys are something else. You know, it kind of reminds me of a song. Hit it, boys. Have you ever seen a boy with funny clothes, a girl with braces on her teeth or freckles on her nose? Some kids call them oddballs. Some kids call them weird. Is it my imagination or does Aunt Ruth have a beard? God makes lots of people in all colors, shapes, and sizes. He loves them very much and what we need to realize is that calling people because they're different is wrong. Instead, we need to look on them in love and sing this song. I can be your friend. I can be your friend. Any day in any weather. Or we can be friends and play together. Yeah, we're all pretty different. Some are skinny, some are stout. But the inside is the part that we're supposed to care about. Aye, that's where we got feelings that are very much the same. And so instead, something wrong? Oh, no. I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to invite Fernando to my party after all. Really? That was quick. What made you change your mind? Well, you know, being different can be good. Like, maybe if my party's about to be smashed by a giant popcorn bomb in there, Fernando could eat it. Or maybe if the slime monster shows up and tries to squirt slime all over us, Fernando could maybe blast him with his x-ray eyes. Well... I don't think Fernando could do those kinds of things, but I bet he could teach you about his country and show you the kinds of foods he likes to eat. Who knows? You might like it. Yeah, that sounds fun. I sure am proud of you for making the right decision. Well, it's time for sleeping. I love you, little mister. I love you, big mister. See you tomorrow. Okay. Lieutenant Larry here dropped our map right out of the spaceship. Sorry. And, uh, we were wondering if you could just give us directions to the freeway? I think we can make it from there. Out the window, down the street, left to Mr. Slushy. Great. Thanks. That's what I said. I said left and Mr. Slushy. Oh, no. You said right. I distinctly remember you saying right at Mr. Slushy. Why would I say that? That'd be... that'd be crazy. I'm kind of thirsty. Can we stop at Mr. Slusky? No, we need that money for tolls. We're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we learned today. And so what we learned, learned our lives to our lives to God has a lot to say. In the 
story of Flibber Olu, we learned that loving your neighbor means helping people, even when we don't really feel like it. And in space, we learned that loving your neighbor means we can be friends with everybody. Yep, even kids who are really different than us. We might even learn from them, too. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. Love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19.18 now that means we should treat others just as nicely as we want to be treated. Oh, look at the time. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye. Bye.